Good morning. Welcome back to App Developer Conversations. As always, I'm here with Ryan Morell of PlacePlay and Ian Sefferman of Mobile Dev HQ. So we're going to talk about a few new devices. The last week has been full of a lot of announcements, as well as Microsoft officially releasing you know, Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8 to the world. So uh, first, the Nexus 4 is out from Google, and initial reviews are great. The screen is supposed to be amazing. It's very fast, great hardware. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts? What do you think, Ian, about the Nexus 4? It looks great. I think my biggest, my biggest complaint about it was like, I didn't hear anything about this announcement. I, mean, I know, I know that it got delayed because of Sandy, and like that probably threw a huge wrench into all of their press. But seriously, like I really saw nothing about it, um, and that, I mean, that kind of sucks for Google. Kind of sucks for for Android in general. Like you, I didn't hear really hear anything about it. I mean, they did some of the PR stuff, and all the new devices look good. I think for the Nexus Four, it's, it's probably not great to not have LTE coverage. Um, and it sounds like everything that I read about it was those are kind of just lame excuses from, from Google on why they don't have it. Um, you know, but in, but in general, all of these devices and rollouts seem to just kind of get melded together. Um, and though you know, we talked about Android having this huge, massive market share, um, it, it probably wouldn't hurt them to have some like true flagship devices um, that they were pushing and their hardware vendors were pushing because we kind of see it with the Galaxy S3 but that's mostly Samsung. Yep. Um, I mean, I feel like Google needs to stand up and say, this is the Android phone of the future or whatever it is. But, well, it's, it's tough, right? Because so they're building this Nexus brand. So there's Nexus now spans phone and tablet. This is Nexus 4, but they also have the you know, Nexus 7, the Nexus 10. Which, by the way, are terrible names to name these like the 4 and the 7 and the 10, I don't know where they go. <laughs> it's just very confusing, yeah. actually. But, you know, they're building the Nexus brand. Yeah. But those the brand is actually uh, built by t typically Samsung. So they started out with HTC, but like most of these devices are Samsung or Asus, I guess, is the Nexus 7. And then they actually own Motorola. Yeah. So it's like, which flagship device would they actually promote? If, yeah. uh, it's, it's a little confusing, but I think... You guys didn't hear about it much. What I found interesting was on my Twitter stream, two of the biggest sort of Apple fanboys I know both independently said amazing things about voice search, like the Google voice search. And that's because it came out as an app on uh, iOS right. as well as on uh, natively on these Android devices. And both of them were like, Google voice search is so good that it makes me wonder what living on an Android device would be like. And these are both Android or Apple fanboys. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. That is fascinating. That's that's like using iOS to infiltrate yeah. and get yeah. into your platform. Yeah. Well, which is similar. You know, that was a little bit of Apple strategy with iTunes on Windows, right? And yeah. potentially iTunes on Android if they actually do that. Yeah. Uh, I think these battles are fascinating, and they happen at huge levels in dark corners with people <laughs> like Mr. Burns. Yeah. Like, this is how we're going to take them down. And it's it's good. It's really good for everybody, um, and especially consumers. Um, I mean, I, I, I still think that the challenge for Google and Android is it's just really hard to make money for developers. Um, I've yet to see anybody stand up and say, no, I'm making a killing here. It's like, yeah, I'm doing okay. Right, right. Um, and maybe the people who are making a killing are keeping quiet because they don't want people to figure it <laughs> out. <right? laughs> um, so, all right, that's, that's Android and in particular the Nexus line. Uh, this week's been the build conference over at Microsoft. They've been giving out devices. I got my hands on a Lumia 920 for a little while. It's sharp. It's really well built. It feels great in your hand. And I've got to say, playing with Windows Phone 8 is amazing. It's a wonderful OS. And, you know, I didn't use it for, for a week, so who knows? But it made sense very quickly. What's your experience? Have you played with any of these devices? Have you been looking at it? I've, I've played with it a little bit. Uh... Everything that you, I think you're saying is 100% true, and it is awesome. It is a true quality competitor to, to iOS, but they're not going to sell any. <laughs> like, you can't convince me that it's going to happen. And, um, you know, especially as we go through the transition from Windows 7 to Windows 8, and kind of the lower end consumer has issues with upgrades and doesn't like the screen, I think they're, I think they're potentially in big trouble. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's sort of like beating a dead horse. We've said this a few times. Like, show me the volume, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, which is interesting because they announced that over the first four days or whatever of Windows 8 being out, that they had four million either upgrades or licenses. It was a little bit vague of what it was. And right. so it's, did they sell three million or four million surfaces? Or yeah. did they have four million of the billion Windows machines out there upgrade to right, right. Windows 8. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the, the challenge here is they can't have another Windows Phone 7, right? They can't go through another, I think it's been two years, right? Two years from now, if Windows Phone 8 has, is selling four million devices a quarter, right. you've got huge, huge problems. Right. So they either need to get it right this time, or I, mean, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what the alternative is to that. Well, I, I mean, I think that uh, Charlie Kindle wrote uh, uh, on his blog a little while ago, he was a long time Microsoft the sort of GM of mobile and stuff, uh, was saying that you can tell if you go into the stores, right? If they've gotten into the channel and the stores are actually promoting Windows Phone 8 phones, yeah. and that's working across like, lots of different stores, things will shift, right? That's where the, the decision is made, but, um, you know, You've got to watch the next couple of weeks and see if that's that's actually starting to occur. Yeah. Um, well, I was reading something on Pocket Gamer, and this is especially relevant to, to developers that you know they're still going with this Xbox Live, non Xbox Live app stuff, and it's a nightmare. Yeah. Like, so if you don't if, if you don't get Xbox Live and you're a game developer, you get don't do it. <laughs> There's no point. Right. right. Um, and until they get that solved. Your, the rich get richer and the poor just don't show up. Yeah. Right? So I think that's a big challenge for them. Yep. Any other devices we should be talking about? Anything else you've seen in the world of like what's been launched this week from like maybe just Windows 8? Like so this upgrade stuff. Not clear on the, the data, but any anecdotes around developers playing with it? I, I actually played with it. I installed Windows 8 uh, uh, through Parallels this week. Oh wow. Yeah. And it was like I like it. I, it's cool. It's, yeah. uh, you know, under parallels, it's a little bit slow, a little bit weird, especially, the, I mean, the, the biggest thing is I still don't know why they have both that start screen and desktop. Like, choose one, and I would choose the start screen because I think it's cool style, but the mix between the two just makes it so uncomfortable to use, um, and it makes it even more uncomfortable to use when you're on parallels, but mm, yeah. that, that's something that I, uh, I... I mean, I've heard people saying, I don't technically know anybody that has a surface that really likes it that isn't like very closely attached to Microsoft, but everyone seems to like them. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of Microsoft people waiting in line to buy them last weekend. Yeah. What I'm intrigued by is the fact that, so a laptop like this that's running Windows 8 that has a touch screen, you can actually sort of fold over and you can just turn into a tablet. It's cool. Right? I, if, it, if the performance is good enough, from my perspective, that's really exciting. Like that's a that's a very cool innovation that I, I want to experience myself. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think that that was you experienced that in like two thousand and three. Well, and it was really <laughs> really crappy. But first and foremost, those things were like eight pounds. No, yeah. 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 If we're talking about two pounds and uh, they're durable, and I can sort of again toss it on the couch, things change for me. At least yeah. For me, I feel like you need to be like a CIA agent for the gadgets you want. <laughs> <laughs> Pull it up, it's gonna be fine as hell. I can write on it, I can throw it in the wall. I just want the future <laughs> faster. Yeah. <laughs> All right, anything else? So, I think we covered it. So, uh, thanks for joining us and stay tuned for next week's App Developer Conversations. Thanks. Great. The Mark Andreessen thing of software is eating the world, it's more like Android is eating the world. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, I actually think the most mind-boggling number is Windows Phones, 140% increase. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. So, so.